read. First off, I want to give a shout out to the Michael Myers fanatic. He just made a great video about the possibility of a Halloween video game. Be sure to check that out right here. Retired Life isn't particularly agreeing with Frank. He doesn't have much to do and he's quite lonely so he routinely calls this woman who works for the people sending him retirement checks just to chat. And then one night he's attacked. Don't worry, he's fine. He's ex-CIA. Did I not mention that? Realizing that he's now apparently a target, he hooks up with several of his former colleagues to try and find out who's behind it. I have not read the Warren Ellis comic miniseries that this is an adaptation of, so I can't really compare the two. However, this does a pretty nice job of emulating a comic book style without it defining the entire look as with Sin City and 300. For example, when it goes to a new location, we'll see a postcard of it. It'll then be animated and we'll go into the postcard and be in the location. We also get very broad pans effectively simulating the feel of comic book panels. And then there is, of course, the action. It kicks ass. We get some nice, effective, and not at all excessive use of slow motion, and we get good shootouts, hand-to-hand -hand combat fights, and some fast driving. In addition to the action being over the top, the tone is also very tongue-in-cheek. We are not meant to take this seriously. Trust me, if you try to take this seriously, you're probably gonna hate it. That does, however, lead nicely to the first problem with this movie. There are times when we're meant to take it seriously, and we just can't. You know how in Shaun of the Dead, it's basically a romantic comedy with zombies, and every so often, it'll kind of stop and there'll be some drama, and it works? It doesn't here. We're kind of just tolerating the attempts at drama and waiting for the next punchline, or the next punch. I would say only about half the humor works. The rest is kind of forced. And at times this is too silly. Perhaps you've seen Freeman's very gaudy uniform in the trailer. We also have Brian Cox chewing scenery like there's no tomorrow as a retired Russian agent. And that brings me to the performances, and that's another thing. These are very good actors. Bruce Willis is perhaps best at playing one particular type of role, but that is what he's playing here, the badass. You know, he's got the glare, the low tone of voice, He's got the whole attitude. Helen Mirren is just a great actress. Morgan Freeman is also immensely talented. And so is John Malkovich, and we get to watch him play uh, kind of a crazy person, and he's good at that. He does get a lot of laughs, though I will also say at times it's a bit too forced. They barely use Freeman. I don't know why. He's really not in this very much. Oh, and then there's Mary Louise Parker. I don't really know her. These five do deliver good performances, except when the dialogue is so poor that even they can't save it. The dialogue is dry. Sandpaper dry. I don't mean, like, dry wit. No, it's just dry like a desert, like you want some water, like could we please get some life into these lines dry. I have a hard time believing that some of this stuff actually got past early drafts. It's bad. The dialogue isn't always bad, but when it is, is really bad. Richard Dreyfus is a blast to watch in this. Mirren is a lot of fun to watch as well. Her as a retired killer is just 
that's good. Also, Carl Urban as the main agent they're up against is very well cast. The guy has that kind of intensity, you know, you believe that he just keeps on. You buy him as a well-trained agent. There are some things in this that you kind of expect, but they still work. The plot is pretty straightforward, and it doesn't really stand out. There are several things in this that... There are several things in this that really feel like they're just taken straight out of a comic book. The plot twists and developments don't really have much impact on you. All in all, this is definitely at its best when it's funny or when there's an action scene going on. And I will say that near the end, I wasn't bored, but I was kind of thinking, is this ending anytime soon? It seemed to go on for longer than I thought. All in all, if the concept appeals to you, even if you are terribly disappointed that this wasn't a remake of one of the films in Kieslowski's Three Colors trilogy, I would suggest that you go watch it. It's fun for the hundred or so minutes, even if it may not stay with you for terribly long. That was my spoiler for review of Red. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. I think the trailer almost gives too much away. I mean, I knew that Freeman wasn't dead that first time. In fact, let's talk about the second time. Did anybody think that he was really dead? I mean, me and my friends spent the rest of the movie expecting him to turn up. I mean, the entire supposed impact of the speech about who's gonna sacrifice themselves I also really didn't believe for a second that it was going to turn out to be Bruce Willis, even if they made Freeman look like him, you know, with the hat and the coat. Either Mirren is a lousy shot, or she's really not trying to kill neither the FBI guys nor the Secret Service members. I mean, does she hit anyone? I'm thinking that she doesn't want to kill any of them. It was okay the thing about Mirren shot the guy three times in the chest, and then we find out that was Brian Cox's character. But it just really didn't have any impact. None of the relationships in this really seemed to work. Not Parker and Willis, not Freeman and Willis, not Mirren and Cox. It had no dramatic weight, no pathos. Not to me. I wasn't entirely sure if the vice president died there at the end. I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter much. I mean, who in their right mind would actually vote for Dr. Doom? I mean, haven't we learned anything? Of course, to me, he's always going to be, you know, Cole Turner, Balthasaurus, human form. Best damn character on Charmed. I didn't even know he was going to be in this, and then I spotted his name at the very end of the opening credits, as far as cast goes, and the rest of the movie, I was just trying to spot him. It did kind of work that it turned out to not be him, you know, because he did seem kind of wimpy. Sorry, McMahon. Nothing personal. Please be in more movies. I want to see you in movies. You always seem to be in crappy movies. But it did have the negative side effect that the whole chasing down the vice president thing was completely unnecessary. The movie could have ended if they hadn't just left Dreyfus unconscious, but killed him. It was kind of nice with the whole, I'm the bad guy, you're the good guy thing. And I did get a kick out of his last ten minutes on screen, with him grinning and just totally being super villain. The fight between Urban and Willis was pretty awesome and pretty funny too. I just love that after it all we find out that the whole point of Willis fighting him was to get the 
security badge. And, you know, him saying, oh, we can't crack this code, it changes every six hours, and then just kicking in the wall and readjusting so it opens right out of the comic book. The grenade stuff at the cargo containers was pretty good. You know, batting one back in the face of the guy, also right out of the comic book. While it was cool enough that they were there and just shot all the bodyguards, the climax was kind of nothing. You know, Willis just walks up and smacks Dreyfus. And after all the action we've seen in the film, yeah. But it was kind of funny and unexpected. They just all come forth afterwards. I really like the reveal on her having been duct taped. That was pretty funny. I really like that Malkovich actually came in handy. You know, he seems like just a paranoid, delusional guy. And then, you know, the first helicopter is, you know, writing down uh, the number on it. And then the second helicopter. There, there's a helicopter. We're at an airport. No, it's the same helicopter. Look! I didn't personally find it terribly funny how they were arguing about, wait, is that really a seven? Is that really a four? But it did kind of work with James Ramar then walking up. I'll tell you what it is. And then get, and the thing with, I'm getting out the pig. And then at first it seems like it's just a stuffed animal. You know, and then later, open the pig. And then, and there are guns inside. That's just great. Could they really not think of funnier jabs for the younger agents to call the retired ones than old man and grandpa? I like that the whole thing with the vice president was just chasing him to where they needed him to be. You know, it's not a bunch of unsuccessful assassination attempts. No, they just needed him to not take that one limo that they blew up. They needed him to take the one that Willis was driving. And we knew from the second that one showed up that that's Willis driving. I did kind of miss him for, you know, I mean, there's like 20 minutes where we don't see him there. When Mirren leaves the machine gun firing, I mean, we've seen that kind of thing before, but it still worked. I love that the CIA archives, the files, are ultra top secret, and yet they still black out almost all of the text. Why would you even bother archiving that? There's like the occasional word here and there. I like that Mirren was completely ready to take out Bruce and that she also knew about Malkovich out in the bush. And the very first instance of action in this, when we first see the three assassins in the house, you know, Willis walks down the stairs, going, you know, probably going to the bathroom, getting up, old guy getting up in the middle of the night, going to the bathroom, and then these three top-trained guys, you know, walking behind him with their guns drawn, and they're just about to shoot, and where is he? And, he? and he's there behind them and just takes them out with ease. And then he makes it seem like they're shooting in the house by heating up the bullets with a frying pan. And the rest of the guys just tear the place apart with their assault rifles as they walk in unison towards the building, firing constantly. Again, right out of a comic book. And no one shows up, by the way. No, not a single neighbor, you know, sticks his head out. Hey, what's going on out there? Anyway, those are my thoughts on Red. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.